Cool. Today we have uh, <clears throat> on our, our def site review. Do the paperwork is Taytown Weezy, and this is the documentation via FOIA. This is public information. So, reading through this, I I thought it was pretty interesting. Um, so yeah, let's take you. Let's go through it. All right, this is a homicide that took place on 340 West 60th Place in Chicago, Illinois, um, on the sidewalk. Uh, the victim is DeMarco Lyons, age 22, born in 91. He had dreads. There is a witness here and it is a female that's black, 16. All right, going down. We didn't know the uh, gunshot, handgun. All right, here we are. So this is the narrative of uh, what they saw when they arrived on the scene and what witnesses might have said or didn't say. So, in summary, officers responded to a call of a person shot at above location. DeMarco Lyons, the victim, observed laying on the sidewalk with no sign of life. CFD truck 51 pronounced DOA at 1452 hours. Blank, a witness, related to BT 6769C that she was walking westbound on 60th place with the victim, at which time, blank, unknown offender, pulled up in a four-door gray car, exiting the vehicle. Blank, blank, and firing mul multiple shots at the victim, then fled westbound on 60th place and then northbound through the alley in said vehicle. Blank related that blank recognized the offender. There you go. You doing crimes with witnesses around? I, I, like, you know, especially a murder and there's someone there to witness that? Anyway. Related that blank recognized the offender. Blank, blank. Right? All right. And that's the end of that. So now we know the narrative based on an eyewitness that was at the scene. Uh that was there when he got killed <laughs> all right so not sure you know if that's his little sister or, or what or whatever the case but uh it was a female 16 witness all right so supplementary reports this additional documentation now it seems this date is february so i guess like a year later um they must have caught up with this dude here, the offender. They got an offender now. And this guy's name is Nevada Hicks. And he's in custody. Yeah. And he's 18. All right. So, yeah, just more of the information about him. Let's go back up. Sorry about that. Fender, Fender. It's interesting. They got the school name here. So he got killed by a young boy. He was 22, I believe. The young boy was 18. Right on the sidewalk of this 340 West 60. All right, scrolling down. All right. Victim, his nickname is Wheezy. He's 22. Fender, Nevada Hicks. They have him 17 here, not even 18. Younger. Anyway, so looking at this, wow, look how many times. That was 10, that's 10 shots, man. 10 shots, uh, Nevada Hicks, you know let off into this kid, man. He was actually older than them. So anyway, 
upper right chest lodged. That'll do you. Entered right inner wrist. You know, this is this is all looks like it's all torso. You know, you just let loose in the guy's torso and, and hop back in the car. Alright. And directly, yep, you know. I don't think he, he stood much of a chance. Um these bullets are lodged. Like this one here, it would paralyze him. Unfortunately. Anyway, so looking, moving down, you know, um, weather and lighting. It was approximately 24 degrees that day and snowing. And they were street lights. So, two in the morning, 2.48 a.m., 24 degrees at night in Chicago, you know, uh, Taytown Wheezy, and I, I don't know who the female was related to him or not, but they was out walking, and this dude popped out on him. So as the victim walked westbound on 60th place, the offender Hicks exited a gray-colored vehicle armed with a handgun and fired multiple shots at the victim Lyons, striking him multiple times. Slash possible gang conflict involving black disciples from the Lamb Rock faction, faction and the gangster disciples of the 5 7 faction. So they got the vehicle and all the evidence, the inventory, all that. Crime scene photos. What I'm trying to get to is the um, statements, and yeah, here we go. So the witness blank gave a videotaped interview that included two exhibits on the 9th of December in 2013. So this was like right after it happened. At approximately 0 0.30 hours in the presence of a uh, state attorney, they recorded it. Blah, 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 blah. All right. On the 13th of January, reporting detectives by uh, Deneen and Kaliki <laughs> Discovered that officers blank and not blank, but officers of the fugitive apprehension unit had located Nevada Hicks and placed him in custody on the arrest warrant that was issued. Um, a first degree murder arrest warrant, apparently, after placing Hicks in custody, the arresting officer transported him to the South Detective Division. Right. So they interviewed Hicks got him, uh, I guess these fugitive people bagged him, right? So the RD began the interview introducing themselves, advising Hicks of his rights, all right? The offender, Hicks was advised of his rights. During this interview, the RD noticed that the offender, Hicks, had spots of missing hair on his head and questioned him about it. Hicks explained his bald spots by telling the RDs that he suffers from a nervous condition that causes his hair to fall out. Although Hicks acknowledged being nervous, he was unable to explain why. So your hair falling out, Cam. You're only 18 or 17 years old. Why is your hair falling out? I don't know. Hicks also acknowledged knowing that the police were searching for him, but Clay did not know why. When <laughs> questioned if he had spoken with Blank prior being to a, being arrested, Hicks admitted that he had. All right, and then he goes on to say, I, "I ain't got nothing to do with it," and did not know anything about the murder. Right? Hicks then made it known that he didn't want to continue speaking with the detectives without an attorney present. Once Hicks announced he wanted an attorney, the interview ended. So he pretty much told him, "I don't know nothing." Right? Um, and further to that investigation, detectives arranged that. For the witness to come into the, the division on the afternoon of the 14th to view a lineup that included Hicks. After blank arrival, she viewed the lineup, the detectives assembled, and positively identified Hicks as the offender. Blank witness fatally shoot the, the victim, DeMarco Lyons. After the witness blank viewed the lineup, detectives learned from Detective Mathis and Red of Area South Special Victims Unit that Blank had been in the 5th District lockup with the offender Hicks. Oh, man. 
and now had information pertaining to the RD's, uh, the detective's investigation of him, Hicks. So listen here, man. This is this gets even better now. So now you got somebody that's uh, in the jail that has information, uh, information pertaining to the detectives and of Evan Hicks. The detectives then proceeded to interview the the the, the person that is cooperating in prison. This guy's in jail. Tell tell him this situation. Anyway, the following is a summary of the interview. Blank related. All right, here we go. Blank related that while he was in a cell next to Hicks, Hicks told him <laughs> that he was on a 48-hour hold for murder and had refused to talk to the detectives. Hicks added that the only witness to the murder was Blank. I have no idea what that, that could say. Hicks informed the informant that the murder occurred three weeks ago on the 8th of November. He told that guy when the murder happened when he did the murder but blank assumed that hicks meant so but blank assumed that hicks meant the 8th of december 2013 because the 8th of december was approximately three weeks prior to this date oh okay so he the, the informant got the dates mixed up hicks told the informant that his that his hicks blank had called him to inform him that the police had come to the house so his mother this is his mother Hicks's mother called, uh, had called him and let him know the police came to the house looking for him, and Blank had inquired about what he did, and she, probably. Blank then questioned Hicks about committing the murder by asking Hicks, did you do that shit? That's what he said. The, the, the informant in the jail. Did you do this shit? Hicks responded by telling the informant, yeah, I did it. <laughs> God, yeah, I did it. Hicks added that the victim was from Lamron. Blank explained that he's familiar with that area and understood Lamron to be a faction of the Black Disciples. Hicks also expressed to the informant that he killed the victim because he was a Black Disciple from 61st in, 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 in Lamron, from the Lamb. Wow. When Blank inquired about the victim's age hicks informed blank that the victim was either 20 or 21 he gave him told him his age he gave him he gave him a full description of the guy and when he you know hicks stated that the victim was too old for the blank that was accompanying him. oh now he's trying to get crazy so he's now inferring that the the witness was younger of course she was younger than him because she was 16. he's inferring it was come on man explaining that the blank was that the blank was blank like I, you know he tried inferring some you know whatever hicks remarked that the that that the police should have arrested the victim for a rape charge instead of arresting him for hicks murder this dude's out of control when describing how the blank got away to the informant hicks explained that when he Hicks, I don't even know. I guess I don't even know what that could be. Hicks said that he was going to chase blank, chase him down or something. Hicks also told the informant that the blank, 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 blank. We'll never know. Hicks added that some of his companions have been searching for blank at Dunbar High School in regards to the victim lions. Hicks told the informant, I shot him down. Wow. Hicks also informed Blank that the gun he used, so even the gun he told him about the shoot lines with is on the block of 57th and Shields. Hicks explained that his companions wanted to break it down and throw it in the sewer, but Hicks told them not to and instead requested that they try to sell it or trade it. Man, come on, man. In regards to acquiring a gun, Hicks told Blank to go to 57 <laughs> the block he's from told the man look you get out go over here and tell them Lord Nino so now we know who Hicks is he's Lord Nino from 57th and he says tell them Lord Nino sent you and I'm plugged in like that dog this is crazy 
Listen to this. After the, the, the detectives finished the interview, I had informant they contacted the Cook County State's Attorney. Look, and then this goes straight up the ladder, right? So they they gonna cross reference this dude, right? So the state's attorney is gonna interview him, um, right? Contacted, yeah, no, yeah, she interviewed him, right? And and and, and they 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 put the charge on him. The informed the fifth district Washington man of the appropriate charge for first degree murder against the offender Nevada Hicks for telling on himself, man. How about that? End of story, man. Yo, peace, man.